Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is Coach Fury here today and we are back with our latest episode of our Chicago Bulls Let's Play series and you will see hopefully from the new banner that we have we've slightly changed the, uh, the terminology of this series. We've been running now for several seasons, winning the title last season, finally getting the job done and well this season is going to be just to see where, whether we can repeat and bring a title back to the Bulls again and see if we can retain our status as being the number one team in the NBA. And, well, the focus, as you can probably see from the image with Kawhi Leonard, really focused on trying to bring the Bulls back that title again. And that's what we're going to try and do over this, uh, this remaining part of the series, I think. I've decided I think this is probably going to be the last season of this, this Let's Play series and then we'll maybe open up to a different team, a different era and, and, and bring a different type of spin onto the channel um, for our Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball Let's Play series. And who knows, maybe by then we might be in a situation where the latest version is out and we can maybe do something slightly different going forward. But for now, we're with the Chicago Bulls and focus is definitely on retaining that title. And well, last time we, we talked a little bit about free agency. We went through that process. Pretty dull free agency, I have to say, from our perspective. We, we basically focused on retaining some of our core guys and, and obviously the likes of Brandon Clark coming back on a bigger contract now, being one of our star players, is certainly important to us. We obviously managed to bring Alfred Payton back on a slightly larger deal as well. So we're keeping the core of this team together. But we've added a few interesting players. I mean, we added Duncan Robinson, who I think is going to be an interesting dynamic range scorer for us. Him in combination with Gary Trent Jr., who's already on the team, is going to be interesting to see how, how that kind of plays off against each other. And it means that if we do get injuries, I think this team is is nicely built to kind of kind of sustain that now, I think, more than more than possibly previous seasons. We obviously brought Kobe White back on a slightly larger deal as well. Um, pretty much was the only guy available that we could kind of bring in who would be able to sort of fill a bit of a role for us. And then we've brought in some bench players. I mean, we could talk about them a little bit, but obviously Ben McLemore's coming back. He's not really a defender at this stage. He's more of a shooter. Um, we've obviously retained, brought in TJ McConnell back on the minimum deal. The likes of Nolene's Nul Noel as well. We're just a post player, to be perfectly honest. And, and Jacob Hotel, just... just post presence guys who are probably not going to play a lot for us so immediate things we have done though is we have sent tony jenkins back down to the d league feel a bit sorry for this guy to be honest with you we, we drafted him in the first round a couple of seasons ago and well he hasn't really played a great deal for us he's had the odd game i think in the playoffs i think he, he had one game for us last year where we had some serious injury issues and we had to bring him in so he's going back down to the, the g league and i mean he's going to probably do phenomenal there from what we've seen previously but in, in terms of him getting minutes in this team, it's not really going to happen. We've got Peyton, White, McConnell, all can take up point guard minutes. And they're, you know he's, he's basically going to be far down the pecking order. And we sent Charlie Dieter down, the, the 24th pick from, from this draft, who, to be honest with you, I'll try and move him if I can, probably, if, if I was carrying on this series further on and trying to clear up that, that $2 million contract, really. So... In terms of the depth chart, I'll talk a little bit about that and then maybe we'll go into sort of the, the magazine and have a little look and see how the other teams look for this episode and, and possibly play a couple of weeks of the season. But in terms of the depth chart, it's pretty much status quo from last season. I, I'm, I'm not riding the boat too much. I am, I guess the big thing to sort of say is that we are leaving Duncan Robinson out of the rotation to begin with. Reason being is I just want to keep that momentum going of this team, keep the forward progress going and, and that was primarily around our starting eight nine guys from last season so obviously Peyton Trent Leonard Clark Jackson all taking up the starters minutes then big minutes from Carter coming off the bench to kind of support the front court and then McConnell and White taking up those guard minutes and then Williams taking up a couple of power forward minutes this year really and um, we, we talked about him a lot, I think, over the past couple of episodes. I, my view is that I think he's going to be a good power forward in this league. I don't think he's he's really ever going to be a shoot uh, a shooting guard or a small forward. And I think he'll be an undersized power forward. And I think he'd actually be a very good one at that because he's got good defensive ability. He can rebound, pass the ball fairly well, good court IQ. And if you can see from his stats, his shooting numbers have improved, but mainly because he's, he's, he's inside the paint and, and that's where he's getting most of his buckets. So... I'm going to use him there and then it, basically that's kind of why we brought in Robinson to be honest with you because if we do get any injuries to sort of the wing players 
um, you know, looking at Leonard, Trent, etc. Then we've got Robinson who we can bring in and, and kind of use that, that 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 talent we've got there. But for now, starting the season, I'm going to just run with what we had last season and, and hopefully that keeps keeps the momentum going, as I said. We're obviously going to stay post-focused and we're going to stay passive on defence and then the player matchups, we're just going to basically say Peyton and, and Clark take perimeter players, everyone else take whoever you want. So in theory, that'll, that'll keep us nice and tidy on our offense and defense and we'll keep up that, that elite, elite performance on both sides of the ball we had last year. So next thing we should probably talk a little bit about is, is what the other teams look like because we've, we've been going for a few seasons now and there's been a few changes and it's worth talking about that. So if we go to the Eastern Conference in the, in the magazine preview, see obviously the, the, the game has us logged as the number one team in the Eastern Conference and rightly so we are the champions interestingly though they've got Kobe White slotted in at shooting guard and we've obviously got Gary Trent I, I can understand that because if you look on pure talent Kobe White is, is a better player than, than Trent but I just prefer Trent's shooting and if we if we took him out I feel that that would clog the lane for some of these guys like Clark, Carter, Leonard to kind of really get it done and, and Peyton's not exactly a great three-point shooter so we, we kind of need that that three three and D type guy in, in the starting five. So absolutely, completely agree. We are the number one team. But I guess the surprising thing is that some of this is really rejigged now. So if we go to the number two team in the Eastern Conference, we have the Atlanta Hawks. And and basically that team hasn't changed a great deal. They brought in Troy Lawson, who's a draftee. But you know, Trey Young and, and Troy Lawson are a really interesting backcourt duo. Um, they've got some solid frontcourt players in Collins and Capella. You can kind of do the job in there. Collins is a bit of a scorer. Capella's sort of your rebounder, does all the dirty work in the post. And then Hayata, the you know the three and D got die. So I mean, in terms of the way they're built, they're very similar to us. But I would say they're more backcourt heavy than we are. But they're, they're certainly going to be a very interesting team this year. They were forty two and forty last year, but they've added a couple of nice players. So We'll see how that goes. I mean, it's, it's really going to be about how good Troy Lawson is. And if we go and have a little look at him, I, I can just we can just have a look and see how he looks. So it's really going to be down to to how how he performs. So he looks like he's he's not particularly that good, but he's a good all rounder. Um, but they obviously the, the game is obviously rating him to be a high performer. I think this year from what I've seen. So we'll go back to the magazine, back to the preview. Then we've got the Knicks in at a third seed potentially. Adding LeBron James, you know, I think he's 40 now of LeBron in this game, so I'm not expecting that sort of output from him this year from what he had last year. But, you know, they've added Ben Daniels, who's a drafty, I think, from a couple of years ago. Topping Robinson. I'm kind of surprised that this team is ranked so highly. I'm guessing because they're still expecting LeBron probably to put up some of those numbers. Um, but we'll see. They obviously were 44 and 38 last year. I'm not sure whether they're going to be a three seed this year. And then the Cavs have made a huge jump, mainly because I think Colin Sexton has just turned into an absolute beast of a scorer. Really, really good scorer now in this league. But they've added some interesting players around. I mean, and we, Windler, Kennard are kind of replaceable. But Drummond and Tracy look like they could be interesting added in here. So we'll, we'll see how that works. And then we've got the Magic, Oladipo, Terry backcourt. Isaacs looks like he's doing well. Vucevic is obviously that sort of non-defensive centre who just puts up points. So it's it's going to be down to really how how that works alongside Chris Scott, the uh, the rookie they brought in. So um, again, I, I think the waiting on the rookies probably for the Eastern Conference particularly is it kind of weighs some of these teams a little bit more favourably than I would have them. And then we've got the Raptors who have got Clay Thompson now, Brogdon, Bowen, Sixiakum, and and a Bush, Boucher, I think that is. So they've they've added. Not a lot, but I mean, Siakam is kind of going to be the driving force, I think, for this team with, with Brogdon and, and, and Thompson. That, that three are going to be dynamic, and we'll see how that goes. And then the Hornets, I, I was really surprised the Hornets um, were, were kind of ranked so low, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I like Lamelo, I like Porter Jr., and I, you know, I like Hayward, even though he's aging, he still looks like a good player. And I was surprised they were so low, considering they won 48 games last year. And you'd expect Lamelo and Porter to kind of continue developing, but it's the interesting thing I found about this this comparison when we get to some of the back end here is that we've got the 76ers ranked so low, but they've still got Simmons and Embiid and, and and Harris. They've still got that trio there, but they're ranked incredibly low. I mean, they were previously always a top two three team ranking wise. So I'm not sure why there's a drop off there as such. 
Um, and then we've got the Pacers, it, it kind of a middling team, to be honest with you. I'm not going to spend too much time on, on them. Um, then we've got the, uh, the, yeah, the Washington Wizards. The Russell Westbrook is obviously declining now, and this team is kind of declining around him. A um, lot of younger players in here. It's kind of a mix, mix match, see how they do. And then we've got the Heat. Again, their front court is interesting with, with Blackman and, uh, and Adebayo, two interesting sort of front court players. Butler and Harrow I like as wing plays. I'm not sure about Melton being the starting point guard for them. But I, I honestly could not believe this, guys, that the Milwaukee Bucks were ranked in the bottom third of the Eastern Conference. They, I think they, you know, have always been a contender every single season in this. And they haven't, in terms of what they've got, I mean, I'm, the only thing I can guess is because the Marcus Aldridge is, is, is just a, a really old player now. Chris Paul's a really old player. But they've still got Holiday, Middleton and, and Giannis as sort of the main pieces. Uh, and you could put anyone next to those three and they're probably going to be a contender. So I don't expect them to drop off from a 55-win team to, to being a bottom four team at all. And then we've got the likes of uh, the Nets as well. And again, I can't see them dropping off too much. They've still got Durant, Irving, McCollum, Adams. This is a really good duo. And they've added Markinen and, and Clarkson, two players I actually really like off the bench. So again, I'm surprised with that one. Then the Pistons are obviously still down there. I mean, they've, they've added Wiggins and, and John Wall, probably the big notable names, but they're still going to be down there. And then you've got the uh, the Celtics, who've been a bit of a downward trajectory since this, this Let's Play series has started. I mean, they've got Tatum still, but outside of Tatum and Brown, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced that they've got much else. And then if we go over to the Western Conference, it's a little bit more of a status quo to the Eastern Conference. I think it, the, the Eastern Conference seems to have had the most change in terms of what the projection is in terms of how teams are going to perform. But no, no real surprise here that the, uh, the, the Dallas Mavericks are, are the number one seed. Porzingis, Harrell and, and Doncic are really good and I really like Bridges and Davis as the supporting piece in their starting five so fully expect them to be up there. It could be their season this year. I mean Doncic looks like an absolute phenomenal player now. But then you've also got the Pelicans who have made a huge jump. We've got Ball and, and Williamson obviously two key players. Levine who we traded there. I mean I, I like this team all around really. I, I'm not sure about Pro, 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 Poropat, um, how he how he looks. But I really like everything else they brought in. They brought in Bogdanovich as well, so they brought in a shooter. And, and they've still got Rubio off the bench and Tristan Thompson. So they've got pieces. I think they're going to be a very good team this year again. And then we've got the Golden State Warriors who have gone through a bit of a transition. But I, that backcourt, even though they're both ageing now, I mean, Curry and Beal is just going to be lights out. And they're fully going to be a very, very good offensive team. Wiseman inside, I think the Golden State Warriors are going to be an elite team this year as well. Then we've got the Jazz. Pretty much status quo. Not a lot has really changed here, so I'm not going to comment too much on them. They're probably going to win 50 plus games again. Like the front back, I like the front court. Um, I, I, Mitchell's still phenomenal. And then the Suns have probably had a bit of a drop off because obviously Chris Paul has declined and been and been moved on now. Still got Aiton, still got Booker, who are kind of the main pieces here. And we'll, we'll see how that looks with with Courtney Tuck, the rookie starting in the power forward. Probably going to be a little bit more of a downward decline from 51 wins, but we'll see. The Timberwolves are sort of in where they kind of have been for most of this Let's Play series, to be honest with you. Carl Anthony Towns is sort of the biggest piece. D'Angelo Russell is sort of also there. And I, I don't know how they're going to do, to be honest with you. Depends on how those two do, I think. Then we've got Oklahoma. There's not a lot to say about them. They're going through a bit of transition. We'll see how they look. I mean, I'm surprised Jabari Parker got paid so much in the offseason. But there we go. The Rockets are an interesting one as well. I think they are a middle team now, even though they've got Jokic and Harden. I, I think on, a, on any given day, this team could upset anyone in the league. But I'm, I'm not convinced with Mobley playing in, in sort of the powerful position for them. I think that was a bad move bringing him in. So we'll see how that goes. Then we've got the Grizzlies. Uh, Jay Morant still performing phenomenally well, but there's just not a lot of support around him, unfortunately. So that's why they are in the middle. Same with the Kings. I mean, I like Whiteside and Fox, but uh, I'm not convinced on the rest of the rotation here. And then the Trailblazers are down the bottom. I mean, it's basically Lillard and then, and then whatever else they can kind of piece together at this point. I mean, Lillard's getting paid so much money. I, I'm sure that the, the AI is struggling to try and put together a roster here anyway. And then we've got the Spurs who are still down there. Not a lot to say about them, to be honest with you. Status quo. But the Lakers have had a bit of a drop off. Obviously, LeBron has gone now. But, you know, this is definitely Anthony Davis's team now, and it's Anthony Davis 
plus other pieces to see how that works. I don't think they'll decline as much as is predicted here. I mean, they only won 27 games last year, which is, is just, I couldn't believe that when I looked at that. But I fully, I'd, I'd be expecting to be just below 0.500, even with Davis, getting more of the ball maybe. The Nuggets, obviously, 44 win team last year, but they did use, lose Jokic, and I think that is going to be the key that's going to drop them down. And then the Clippers are down the bottom. Not really surprising. They lost Kawhi Leonard to us a couple of seasons ago now. And, and then obviously Paul George is still here. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But for me, I think the Western Conference balance that the magazine has got is, I think is fairly reflective. I'm not convinced on the Eastern Conference though. So we will, we'll see how, how that pans out. But I think what we'll do for the remaining couple of minutes or so is let's just let's get some games done. Let's just try and get ourselves through a bit of the season and see how we get on. So we're going to do a bit of a fast sim, I think. We'll um, we'll sim through maybe, try and get a month done, I think. Let's try and get ourselves to sort of the middle of November and then and see how we get on. Hopefully, we won't have too many injuries. We won't necessarily stop on any action emails. I will just quickly check the inbox, see what else we've got here. So we've had all of the training camps and drafts and things. I've, I've done all that already. Let's get ourselves going. Let's get some games done and see how we actually do stack up this year. Can we retain... The, the title can we look like a a team up the top or are we going to sort of have a bit of a downward spiral we will see so we've got robinson who suffered a, an injury there right away let's go and have a look i mean he's not in the rotation anyway so we can just he's out for eight days we'll just drop him out of the rotation i think We will have you sub out at 100 and remove all your items there. He's not in any rotations, so he should be, should be good to go. Let's get ourselves moving forward. I mean, he's not going to be in there for the first month, as I said anyway. I really want to just get this team flowing and hopefully get some wins on the board before we start messing around and including players who, who possibly weren't here last year. So Alfred Payton suffered an injury. I'm not sure how long he's out for. It's out for 14 days. Oh my goodness me. Okay. So I think we're going to put White in at point guard. Peyton, you're going to come down the pecking order, I guess, here. In terms of point guard minutes, you can just suck all of these up. I really, really do hope with the new version of Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball that they add a better way to micromanage minutes in rotations because. At the moment, it's just it's just a bit of a pain. It really is at times. So I mean, who are we going to put in now? I, th I guess we can just give those minutes to to Macklemore, I guess for now. And yeah, if they're garbage minutes, he can play. Yeah, and you can play point guard. And let's let's go from there. So we've got 14 days to kind of get through before he comes back. So I mean, we'll go to the 7th of November, shall we, and just and see how we get on. So we're 4-0 off the start of the season. We're in, we're in good shape so far. Suffer our first loss to Brooklyn. And a second loss. And Kobe White has got injured. Fantastic. So our two sort of point guard players are injured. He's out for 14 days as well. Great. So that means probably McConnell's going to have to come in. I think we might have to bring Jenkins back out of the D-League. I think that's, that's what we're going to have to do. I'm 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 not going to delve in and try and bring someone in from from the uh, the free agency wire. I don't think at this stage. Let's just bring him back from the, from the D League. I think. Okay, back you come. And I think we'll just give him some minutes. As I said at the start of the episode, wasn't planning on using him at all, but clearly, um, clearly we're going to have to now. So really testing the depth of our point guard position now at this stage. And you'll have to sub out at 70 or so. We'll move these guys back up a little bit. And Robertson can come back up a bit. And I think that is everything. Oh, we've got to put what someone in a shooting guard off the garbage minutes. Let's just put training for now. And we will carry on. See if we can get 
few more days done, at least get ourselves into sort of the middle of November, I think, would be a good good start to the season, see how we get on and, and reflect on that. So we managed to get ourselves a win again against Toronto, and we lose against Orlando 5-3, and three. so a little bit of a, a tougher start than we'd anticipated, I think. But we've had a couple of early injuries, so 7-3 and three is not bad. I will certainly take that. 8-3. and three. Nine and three, so we're in, we're in good shape. Hopefully, I'm not sure. We'll check if anyone's back. So everyone is back, so we can certainly restore the lineups. Bring Peyton back in, McConnell back up, and we we're going to give Williams a few minutes in a power forward. So you can have a breather there. And some whites minutes we've got to assign to someone. We'll assign them. We'll give uh, Robinson his first stint now, I think. We've been on a good run, but we can we can certainly bring Robinson in at this stage. And we will make sure that he's actually going to be able to play some minutes. And so he's going to be back in three days. And Jenkins, we will send back down to the D-League. Let's have a little look and just quickly see how Jenkins has actually done in his minutes that he was in the pros. So not particularly great. <laughs> he played nine minutes, shot absolutely atrociously. Turned the ball over seven times. Was, yeah, okay. So Jenkins is, is just clearly, there was a gap between him possibly becoming a, a, a good player in this league versus being a good G League player. So we get the win against Charlotte there. We go 10 and three. And I think we will leave it at that stage there. We've just got through mid to mid-November. Let's take a look at the standings. We are 10 and 3, so we are top of the conference, which is a great start for us. In terms of the league, we are up there with the Pelicans. No surprise there. As you can see, as I said, the 76ers are doing really well, but the Spurs have had a great start as well. In terms of our insights page, we are second in offense. We're struggling on defense, but our net rating is still still phenomenal. And how have the players been forming? That's the question. So Peyton is still putting up good numbers. Good, because he's earning his money now. Clark is still looking like a phenomenal player. His actual numbers are up slightly from last year, but he's playing slightly more minutes. Duncan Robinson has not played enough, really, to give us an actual viewpoint. Kobe White's numbers are, are kind of where they were. I mean, his, his minutes have been up because he's had to start a few games. But he's, 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 he's looking okay. McConnell, yeah, you're not really playing. You actually played a few several minutes actually because you had to start a few games. And you've actually looked pretty good in terms of numbers. I'll, I'll take that from a, a minimum salary guy. You haven't played, you haven't played. Williams, you haven't played that much at all. But again, look, because he's playing power forward, his actual numbers are much better because he's just playing in the right the right area for where his, his ability is. Trent Jr.'s numbers are just still phenomenal. I mean, that's exactly what I want him to do. Just green everywhere. Shoot when you need to, but that, that's pretty much it. Kawhi Leonard, your numbers have, have actually dropped off a fair bit here. Shooting numbers-wise, you're just obviously not taking as many shots as you have done previously. Yeah, it's looking like business as normal, guys. We're, we're, we're looking in good shape. We are certainly looking in good shape for this year. So, I think we will leave it there for this episode. This is obviously the, the repeat season. We started well. We are 10-3, and three, looking like we are going to hopefully be one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference. But we will come back next time and see how we get on with some of the, the remaining bulk of the, uh, the fixtures before the, uh, the All-Star game and, and the trade deadline, etc. And we'll maybe have a little bit of a think next time as to whether we want to maybe put some trade bait up, maybe throw a, a first round pick out there if there's anything that's of interest and maybe just hopefully put us over the top again this year. But interested to hear your thoughts. How do you think the season's gone so far? 10 and 3 in good shape. We've had a quick look at some numbers, very high level, but we've had a couple of injuries looking good. Always interested to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoy the episodes, hit that like and subscribe button so you get each episode as it comes out live every single week.